Hi, this is Doug with Design H Studio, and this is my Lowrider 3 carrying a plasma torch. And I'm pleased to say that I have all of the motion control settings and homing settings correct in Linux CNC. And as you can see, I'm using the QT Plasma C or some say QT Plasmac uh, skin or interface, user interface for Linux CNC. And I don't yet have my slats in the water tables, but I've got uh, just a thin piece of uh, sheet steel. And um, the only changes uh, other than the PNC Conf wizard is that uh, under parameters, there are some settings related to um, the pierce height and cut height. And so I've changed the, these settings have to be modified based on how you've designed your floating Z and how much it needs to raise up to get off of the metal once it has triggered the floating Z switch. So the defaults on pierce height for me were 0 0.120 and the default for cut height was 0 0.040. And for me, when I measured, it said that 0.275 was the amount of elevation change between touching the metal and tripping the floating Z switch. But when I inputted that, it seemed like I had my torch tip a little bit higher from the metal than I, than I think it should be according to uh, sources that I've checked. So I've just simply added 0.2 onto both the pierce height and the cut height. So I've got 0.32 for the pierce height and 0.24 for the cut height. And then once that's done, we can go into main and I've simply used the conversational mode to create an octagon and then you can save that to the hard drive or you can click the send button to send it over to your main interface. So I've got that octagon there and so just wanted to show you real quick what the homing process looks like, the probe test process and running a cycle to do a dry run without actually cutting anything. So the first thing you do in the interface is hit this power button right here, and then you home all. I've just unhomed everything, so let me home all now. So it's homing Z, and it's finalizing the home of Z, and now it is going down to the zero height. I've got the zero, the final zero height for the Z axis set halfway between the bottom and the top. So I've got 5.2 inches of travel. So I've got my zero set at 2.6 inches down from the homing switches. So you just saw it home the Z and then finalize it. And now it's homing the Y. And now it's finalizing the homing of the Y. And when it gets that all set, everything will light up yellow. And now my motion controls work. So I'm gonna press the Z plus, and the Z minus, um, Y plus, Y minus, X plus, X minus. And those movements were just detailed here. Those X and Y movements were just detailed here on the uh, visual display of my work area. My work area on Y is 30 inches, right at about 30 inches even. And on X, it's 48.6 inches. So one of the things that I did was I set in my PNC Conf wizard, I not only inputted the uh, park gantry button option that I learned from Kyle, which for my case, this code is setting Z to zero. So in my case, that's two and a half inches above the bottom and two and a half inches below the homing switches. Then it's setting X to zero and it's setting Y to 30, which is gonna park the gantry 
way back at the back corner of the machine over there. And then I also created another button called center gantry. It takes Z to zero, takes X to 24.3, which is half of my 48.6, and takes Y to 15, which is half of my 30 inches in Y. So once those um, buttons are enabled, then on your main screen, it brings you those buttons right here. So I will tap the park gantry and you'll see what it does when I tap it. So there we go, gantry parked at the back corner. And now I will tap the center gantry button and you'll see what happens when I do that. So center X and center Y and center Z. And in my case, center Z is halfway between the home switches and the maximum at the bottom. Um, so I mentioned that I had gone into parameters and set my pierce height and torch height. So I'm gonna run a probe test. And when I tap on probe test, it's gonna bring the tip down to the metal and then keep pushing down until it triggers the floating Z. And then it pauses for a set amount of time and then heads back up. Um, one other thing that I can show you here just as a dry run is to run a dry run test on cutting this octagon. And we'll do that with the cycle start button. And it will simply keep repeating that cycle until I tell it to either pause the cycle or to stop the cycle. So my next steps are to go ahead and uh, get some slats and water installed and um, get the plasma cutter um, plugged in and get to a safe place to do some uh, test cuts. But just this is just a quick update regarding my milestones here. And again, this is Doug with Design Aid Studio. And until the next video, I wish you happy making.